So yeah, so welcome to the Muju Business Podcast, where our goal is to provide as much value as we can to entrepreneurs and business owners. I'm Dylan, this is Steve, and today our guest is Jake Still. Um, Jake is the founder and owner of Junk Rescue, a junk removal company in South Jersey. Jake is an entrepreneur in its truest sense and built Junk Rescue from a complete startup into a multi-million dollar junk removal brand. The topic of today's episode is building a brand. So thanks for coming on, man. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we appreciate it. So uh, can you just give us a little idea, like your background, you know, how you how you got to the point where you, you are now? Yeah. So, I mean, our backgrounds are pretty aligned. Right? Yeah, that's, that's, right. <laughs> yeah so, that's kind uh, of funny. Yeah. yeah so, I mean, I, I was going to college out in Westchester. And uh, so the one Andrew got junk was recruiting through the football team. And I lived uh, with my roommate. One of my roommates was on the football team. So he got, yeah. they, you know, hey, I need a job. And, you know, he was like, do you need a job? I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> yeah. Like, and I've <laughs> yeah, always done, goes, yeah. my entire life, I've always done, like, general labor type of work. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, yeah. Especially in summer jobs. Um, and I've always done, like, yeah, it's a workout type of deal. Uh, super fast paced. Like, yeah. and the whole irony thing is, like, now, now we, we all work desk jobs. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, we sit down, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, more than yeah. ever before. Yep, yeah. so, um, so I was like, all right, we worked there. So we worked there. In the fall of 2013, we were at Westchester, and uh, this is during our junior year. And then we were there for a while, and it was honestly like I really enjoyed it. Like uh, uh, I know a lot of people in general, they had other friends like hey, we work there too, and uh, long hours, right? So yep. we worked long hours, and we were college kids, so we were working the weekends. Yeah. So I worked Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but I was yep. working those three days. Plus, mm-hmm. we're college kids, so we were you know. Uh, load up her house and it yep. was the perfect job yeah yeah you got the um, stuff too yeah, yeah yeah all my couches were always junk yeah. stuff yeah. Yep. yeah yeah and at that time that franchise was ran a little differently like every franchise is yep. ran differently yep. right um but i really liked what they did and, and everything else and i learned actually a lot more than you think like working with them about marketing um the one thing that didn't line up was school mm-hmm. and um i couldn't like i told them like all right i can keep working some days in a week but i need to get done for these projects and stuff and you know yeah, how yeah. it is with yep. uh junk removal and anything else it's very unpredictable it's start to finish, start yeah. finish work. yeah you do your best and you know they, they wouldn't get me off sometimes i was like i'll work but then you gotta put me on a three-man route and i'll leave yeah. eventually they started letting me meet but i was like it's just it was it's a lot of that. coordination yeah. so it wasn't that i also got my refund check so I was like, <laughs> yeah. all right, I don't really need to work Oh, man, yeah, you're, you're start balling. balling. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. So yeah. I, uh, I uh, then, you know, the next semester came around, which makes more sense. And same thing. Everybody's like, yeah, one of my other friends works at College Hunks. Let's get a job. And I'm like, yeah, this makes so much more sense. It's in Westchester. We literally could walk to work. And uh, it was college kids. So mm-hmm. much. And it's really different to see the dynamics, at least as far as the people there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and the cultures. But honestly, like, for the one I worked with, at least, too, every franchise is different. One, I definitely saw a difference in sales culture, and one, I saw a difference in like people culture, mm-hmm. um, and how does that affect the bottom line. So I ended up doing that for a while, um, really enjoyed it, and uh, yeah, I was a senior in college, but most of the guys were actually were like high school age, like 18, 19. Yeah. So uh, I was a marketing major, come graduation, they, uh, my boss was like, um, you know, well, I went to the boss, I was like, yeah, like, I, I, I need to look at my career. And I was always kind of last minute and stuff. He's like, well, you got a job lined up yet? I'm like, nah. He's like, keep working here. Do your marketing degree, right? Why don't you do marketing and sales for me? So I did, and that was Mike, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So I did some stuff with him. It was really, really basic, more like sales networking. Yeah. So then, yeah, I learned on the Zigma strategy and, mm-hmm. and some other stuff. And then, uh, as you're familiar with Mike too, right? Mike was, um, you know, it was really just him. Yeah. So at that point, I was one of the first guys to start doing some other office stuff in there. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I did that for the summer. And then I had a buddy. Uh, buddy actually just passed away too. Nah, sorry to um, hear. Yeah. yeah, and it happens. And uh, yeah, shout out to Kev because he was a big influence. Actually, all lined up to this, but I ended up going to medical sales. I think that's where he was. So uh, I did medical. I you know left and I was like, all right, I'll chase some money. I want to do medical sales. Yep. I did it for two years. I sold aesthetic lasers to plastic surgeons and dermatologists. And I went from you know working in junk to to doing that. Yeah. No training, but my actual sales skills that I learned doing this like translated pretty well. Yeah. Uh, it got me that job. But I realized I wasn't happy, and I was like, I really do enjoy this, like the blue collar feel. Like I said, I, my whole life, yes. every job has been that way. Yeah. But bringing in that white collar approach, I really like the branding. I was a marketing guy. So then came, um, uh, I was talking, I was driving up, and it's in like in our story when we do onboarding. So, we, so me and my brother in law were driving, driving up to a, a Yankees game. I'm a Phillies fan, he's a Yankees fan. And we're just making a small talk as you do entrepreneurship. Yep. And, yeah, yeah. You know, I wasn't really happy in my medical field job. 
And he was like, well, what, you know, what do you want to do? I was like, I really like the junk removal space. Like, it was a really cool job. I understand how it works. I like the marketing. I like the blue collar, you know, mm -hmm. space. Yeah, and yeah. I think we could do it differently. And I like the, the market down here, too. Um, he said, what's stopping you? And it's like, I don't know where to start, right? You, you, yeah. You, yeah. Yeah. It's that, it was just that fear to take that first jump, right? right? Yep. And that leap. And, um, you know, that, that's kind of all that came out of it. And then, you know, a month later, we were down the shore. And he was like, surprise, we're business partners. I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> um, and he put in a license. In Jersey, it takes a year to get. Yeah. So he's like, relax, man. Like, you know, it takes a year. We'll see what happens. I was like, it's still with the medical field. A year later, they cut my division. In, no uh, way. So I lost my job. And I was like, all right, what do I do now? And uh, so I was like uh, looking around, looking at other medical fields. And, you know, just so happened that week, the license got approved wow and it was like really good timing let's go um yeah and so like we still looked at it and like making that switch and the biggest thing for us was i was 23 or 24 at the time and i was like i living at home right i have some money um like there's really it's just risk management at the time like what do you have to lose yeah right so we spent three months building the business um at that time i you know what i did i built up i had an eight thousand dollar credit card so i built that fully up because we didn't have proof of concept yet so yep, we didn't yeah. have any money um so we, I built that up. I did, you know, wasn't taking any payment. I deferred my student loans, mm -hmm. um, which I actually deferred again right now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Me yeah, too. Yeah, good call. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I uh, did that, and yeah, we did our first. We built the business model, and uh, you know, we, yeah, I, I've been looking at branding. Right, is we think about what do we name it, right? And I, I have a list of like forty names that we went through, and just you know, ideas, and uh, you know, we really want something that implied action and conveyed feeling. Yeah. Right, and that's where mm. yeah the rescue part of it was something we could build around. Very cool. Um, yeah. And actually, like where the colors come from, you would think they would come from Superman. Right. They actually came from a Best Buy sign. No way. Like, really? Yeah, like, yeah. blue and yellow. Yeah. 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 went yeah. together. So you just kind of yeah. It up. So we bought a we bought a a, a Suzu box truck. Uh, it's parked on down the street, like Route One Thirty. Now it's advertising. Uh, Two thousand six. Literally bought it in Chester, PA. Uh, it overheated as soon as we drove off a lot. We <laughs> yeah, parked yeah. on 9 to that 5, did that? Right. Yeah. Yep, yep. We were furious. We found out like yeah. they drilled holes through like the radiator to make it, I don't know, cool. And, oh, yeah, trucks geez. aren't my forte. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, we made it work. We did everything in the box truck in the beginning. And uh, the first like six months, you know, well, not six months, from August to uh, January, we had like 60 grand and uh, we had some proof of concept. But we really didn't understand the value of working capital. To mm -hmm. that point, yeah, and doing the work in a box truck, right? We we're like, it's the opportunity cost more than anything else, right? Sure. It's how long it takes to fill. It's the opportunity cost of you know the, the unloading as well, yeah. Um, and the access there, and you know, we we made a friend at DEP and he kept saying, you got to buy a roll off, got to buy a roll off. And then my partner, once he had proof of concept, he's like, all right, I'll take some money out against my four hundred one k. Gave us forty grand. We had working capital, and at that point, we're like. We, we were able to see what happened. We were able to staff properly. Yes. We were able to do that. And it wasn't much money and still they went by very fast. Yeah, like, yeah, you, yeah, you still yeah. had to bootstrap it. Yeah, right, for sure. But then that next year, we did about 700,000 uh, and then like 1.2, 1.5, 1.9. And then this last year, uh, we did 3.3. So that's awesome. it's a, yeah. That's, that's, that's it's so been dope. Yeah. <laughs> there's so many headaches. And, and oh, right. It just sounds like, yeah, then you just go. Yeah, you just year. do that and that. Yeah. And there's so many times where you think about quitting and, uh, you know, I'm Am a I very, yeah, yeah, I'm a very calm and mellow guy. And like I said, we didn't take money for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it, it, it's very stressful at times. People don't, I feel like, understand that all the time. But 100%, yeah. uh, it's doable. And like, yeah, you weigh the risk. I know, like Gary Vee's always big on this, right? He talks mm -hmm. about, uh, yeah, you're 20, you're 30, 40. Like, you're still so young and yeah. stuff. And you are to a degree, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's the easiest is, no kids, no family, yeah, sure. live at home, yeah. defer your loans, right? All that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah. Um, and as you go, I, I still think it's not a good excuse to use, but it does get harder. So it was, sure, we were at a good yeah. timing for that. Um, and yeah, we just kept trying to trial and error, figure stuff along the way. And also in that trial and error, like stop trial and error, get people that know what they're doing <laughs> yeah. and get that advice and still be smart. You still got to weigh your risk and where you put your investment, but you have to take risks. For sure. Do, so. do you think that you've shifted your risk tolerance or you feel like you're, you're still willing to put as much as you can on the line now? Or? So I would say in the beginning, yes. Right. Yeah. And then it's funny cause like in the beginning you had nothing to lose and now you got stuff to lose. So it's harder to it, actually it risk it. changes. Yeah. You've got a lot of people that depend on you. A lot of people that have bought in to you know, your vision, what you pitched mm -hmm. out there. Yeah. So you get a lot more emotionally connected there. Um, and 
you know, you're, you're you're trying to build a franchise model and everything else, and you look at the systems and you start looking at sometimes yourself like, what didn't I do? Like I noticed potential in you, and what didn't I do enough to support you there? Yeah. And you have to really learn how to make the proper people decisions, right? What what is you didn't do enough for? No, you just don't have the right person, yeah. or they're not in the right seat. Yep. Um, so our tolerance actually definitely that shift that was high, and then it shifted to you know low risk kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and then I think. Uh, yeah, we're, we're actually trying to pivot back towards that because we have some more clarity. Yeah. We have more experience. Um, but I actually think we, we definitely got too conservative to a point because um, hmm. we did let go. Like actually letting go of the vine, they always say, that wasn't yes. hard. It was not grabbing the vine again. Yes. Yeah. So like, yeah. yeah, letting go was actually there and then things yeah. start to crumble and the systems aren't there and right. you got to rebuild and then you got to let go again and, yeah. and kind of repeat. Yeah. You kind of like advocate. You yeah. Like, yep, it's good now. You know what I mean? And then, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you also like the whole like people respect or inspect. You got to monitor it, mm-hmm. and you have to good have good systems to that. So you don't need to micromanage, but you need to know your numbers. You need to people need direction and, yeah. and all that, and it's uh, easier said than done, right? Yeah. So, sure. um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually it's. I think these are the things that you can't measure: mm-hmm. is taking risks and growth, what it does for the inspiration to the company and mm-hmm. the people part of it. Like people are excited. Like they, they don't they don't want to. They're it, bought in for the vision so they don't want to plateau and sit there and everything else everyone that works here uh, for the most part didn't join the company to uh you know some maybe on the trucks in the beginning college guys especially too yep. but everyone especially in the office guys like they're they want big things yeah they want um, to go somewhere yeah, yeah they're not just looking for you know, kind of you know, for, you know come along for the ride so it's kind of like there. sending the message right like it's almost i don't know if you remember this when the eagles won the super bowl in 2017 mm-hmm. like midway through they traded for jay jay which mm-hmm. kind of sent the message from the top down like no we're trying to win now yeah like, we're trying to go somewhere we're not just like yeah well you know we're kind of going there like you're you're sending that message like all the way down like no we're 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 happy where we are but that we're not staying here yeah yeah, yeah and i think that's like uh so quick, like, kind of said because Tom Brady just retired. Mm-hmm. I always had this theory on, like, Tom Brady where uh, at this point in age, I like, guess, go, he's a stud. Sure. But what doesn't measure as well is the almost like the placebo effect he can have on the people around him yeah. because we have Tom, right? And we those are really hard things to measure where it's like, what does your presence your or your actions do to the psyche of the people around yeah. you? And how does that raise them up? Mm-hmm. For sure. Um, so, you know, uh, I, I, again, I think Tom Brady's a stud. But I yeah, think, yeah. you know, just by being around him, people have more confidence and they yeah. play a little they better. They feel like too. they can do it. Yeah, and for yeah, sure. So it's, it's really, it goes far into what your actions, you know, indirectly do to the people around you. Um, yeah. So you're always, like, watching, you know, what yeah. you're doing. You have to be cognizant of how the people are reading you and, yeah, you know, and learning sure. from you. Yeah, great point. But So if you would go back to the beginning, what was... What was your goal and how has that kind of like developed over time or, or has it? Is it kind of the same like from financially from or both? Yeah, in general. Like, like, you know, what would, was it only financial? Was it partly financial? What was like, you know, your goal at that beginning stage, you know, if, if you had one or so, how was that developed? Yeah. So, I mean, from day one, the goal was always to uh, franchise and scale. So, um, you know, there's value, obviously, like the corporate, the corporate model, right? Um, you can keep more of your business you, you know, if, if it's profitable, right? You get a larger percentage than just the royalty. Um, but it's more to manage it. The value of the more capital you need to invest, of course. And the value of the franchise, right? It's less capital, it's faster to scale. Uh, so we looked at both of those kind of options, right? And you also have people like when they bought in, they're, they're self managed. You give them a good system, but they're, they're, they are managing because it's theirs, right? So yeah, there's, there's yeah, a yeah. different piece when, you, when it's sure. yours and yeah. having a job. Oh, yeah, yeah. And even the franchise, you know, it's still theirs. Mm-hmm. Right, and it's just like you know, for us, you buy a junk truck, right? And you can bank that truck, it's a profit center. A franchisee can buy multiple franchises, buy multiple territories, and that is a business model, it's their own business, for right? sure. So, we looked at both of those, and the goal was a franchise. We did the college chunks benchmark um, of the two years, and we were there. And again, as we scaled, then we ran into our own issues and, and realized, all right, like, you know, we need to tighten up the systems a little bit. Um, but I think that's still the, the goal is a national you know concept and scaling, um, but the, you you have to look at all the people that worked at these companies before right at these junk companies because junk is removal is one the one industry where or one it, it's a common they call it the entrepreneurial seizure like I can do this better yeah junk was yeah. really hard not to fall for that yeah. because you're like <laughs> I can pick things up and put them down yeah yeah, yeah like, exactly people don't realize so much more and you got to really give credit to the big guys out there because. Yeah, if it was that easy, there'd be a lot more, you know, oh, yeah. national companies. There's yeah. a billion small ones. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I think that's still the presence and the goal. It's just it's a lot harder. You realize we more the biggest thing that has changed is we realize what it takes to get there. Yeah, um, yeah. and the systems that are so important to that and the foundation. Um, 
So yeah, it's still the same goal as a national brand. Uh, they always talk about like, yeah, you need an exit plan. And I, and I realized this because like, you know, I think a lot of small entrepreneurs like, you know, don't have an exit plan necessarily. Like, I want to build this big up. But the the idea of the exit plan is it, it build, you're building your business to sell. It doesn't mean you will sell it yeah. because it's about a mind, mindset and concept. Yep. Just like they say, you should build your business as a franchise prototype. It doesn't mean you have to franchise it. For sure. It's yeah. the same concept. So that's what we've really been starting to keep in mind as well. Yeah, I was going to say building it to sell is even just building it to franchise. Like you're yeah. selling to somebody yeah. else the concept, right? Yeah. It's like another way to say that you're going to sell. It doesn't have to be like, oh, I'm going to exit at, you know, whatever or go public or something. It could yeah. just be, yeah, I'm building it to sell to other other people in the franchise model too. Yeah. yeah, and you're changing your mindset from being, again, the whole thing is that work on the business and in the business, right? Yeah. Um, and you're changing your mindset because most of us still have a job. We're not, you know, even, even right now with the success we have, I still have a job. Like, right. yeah. Yeah. you know, like I work more than I ever have before. <laughs> yeah. yep. I'm, so we're five years in and in the last three months, I've, I've never pulled a full on. I've worked like limited sleep and I pulled like six of those in the last like three months. So yeah. I'm only working more now, especially as there are more people, right? So it's mm-hmm. the systems there and people don't realize that. Um, so it, it's not till they say you can like step away for three months and the business grows without you. Now you have a business model. You don't have, you don't have a job. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't think people really understand that until they have like all the pressure and they're in that seat. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's tough. Yeah. But it's a, also, the, are you guys in the EOS model at all? Yes. Yeah. All right. Traction. So yeah, visionary, yeah. right? Yes. Yep. You'll see. The original question, I have to circle back to it. Yeah. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I wanted to. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, I yeah. mean, it's the same goal and it's just, it's just how we get there has changed. The thought process and how we get there. For sure. I think that was such a great point too because a lot of people assume that, oh, when I have a $3 million business, pff, I won't even have to work. The thing will just run and it's like completely the opposite and especially if you're aligned with your goals, right? Yeah. Which yours is to be that national brand. I think it's funny too that there's there's no, there was not a financial number. You're not like, oh, we want to do 100 mil. It's like, yeah, no, I want to, I want to see this thing that I've built from the ground up be everywhere. It's, it's not about like, oh, if I made all that money, it's like, yeah, of course that comes with it, I guess, but that what your thought wasn't like, yeah, I'm going to be driving a Maserati. It's like, wow, yeah. I built this thing that's all over the country. So that's what you thought. That's, that's yeah. You, you tie financial metrics to it, right? Of course, like, yeah. Like, you know, you'd be, again, it's, it's a, it's a measure of success, right? Mm-hmm. But it shouldn't be the thing that drives it comes, it, it comes naturally if you do the other things, right? Um, have you guys read the, like the, the millionaire next door? Book? Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah. So, do you remember one of the most common cars they said that million, and again it's a wealth building but the common cars one of them is I think like a, Hon, a Honda or a Hyundai remember what the like SUV that? one was Mm-mm, I don't know it's a Ford Explorer oh. I have a 2013 <laughs> Ford Explorer right now right, right it's yeah. falling apart I'm trying to ride it down <laughs> yep. um, but yeah it just really speaks to um, I think uh, where your values are aligned with and yeah the other stuff comes and I think it's, yeah it's risk management too like what you, where, when do you want to start spending money and doing right. something uh, you got to reinvest and reinvest and reinvest. Yes. You know, your, your business is almost an employee in itself, right? You mm-hmm. got to pay the business. Yeah, so for sure. It's hundred percent. Uh, it's a lot of work. Yeah. So, yeah. Definitely. I mean, and, and you've, you've really built this brand that's like established and, you know, early on, would you say like, what did you do early on that really set you up or what would you do differently that you think would have set you up better? Is there anything? Is there something you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm glad I did that and now I'm here or are there things that you're like, man, I, I definitely should have not done that. So when my business partner was my brother-in-law, um, he doesn't have like a marketing, he's an engineer. Mm-hmm. So he thought black and white. And when he, when I said that year, year in, he built the business model and he said, congrats for business partner. Yeah. It's called South Jersey junk removal. And mm-hmm. I was like, first off, no. that's the first thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Not doing that. So, yeah. um, I think one of the things we did really well is, and this is the, it's straight out of the college homes book too. Uh, it's not why we did it, but I think it aligns with uh, why certain people are successful is day one, everyone was like, yeah, is this a franchise? You know, any, anyone that was on trucks, are you the owners and all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff? Oh yeah. Cause we, we made sure, yes, we had a, a box truck with, you know, and it was um, old, but we made sure it didn't look old and everything mm-hmm. else. And yeah, we made sure to, to have everything, yeah, you know the some of the uniform design definitely changed, but sure. in general, like we're like we're gonna make it look like a brand, um, and and have that color. And and I remember we went did a job in Princeton, and two marketers uh, did that. We were on the trucks at the house for, it, and they were just raving about the the even the from the color design to layout on the truck and everything. Yeah. So it was like it was just nice to have that kind of credibility. They were again two New York marketers, and it was yeah. cool. So that's one thing we did is like we established we're making a brand. Um, 
And then I think the, the other part's like the brand messaging, tying things into. So we did that. We, I don't think we did it well until recently. You mean mm-hmm. outwardly, like to customers? Yeah, to the clients yeah. to understand, all right, I see this. I, I feel the brand a little bit, but really it's you know, tying it in. How do you make it for us? Like, is that heroic journey throughout the, you know, from yeah, start to finish, yeah. right? Yeah. How, do you, how do you actually make them feel like I'm being rescued? Um, and from what, whatever that may be, it actually could be clutter, but it could just be from, you know, a time, you know, relative receiving. So, you know, obviously people got to move. They, everyone books last minute. So yep. closure is going tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So how do we not only pitch that feeling, we get them to feel it throughout the experience. And, uh, that's a lot of what we focused on. And I think it's easier when you're on the trucks. Right to For do sure. that, yeah. yeah, absolutely, it's our business, right? So yeah. and we're, it's gonna be we're perfect, of course. I'm yeah, not we're gonna, anything up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so it gets really hard though when you when you don't have again even your core values and all that stuff well documented to yeah. teach your guys to go live those you know live those right uh, the values that you know, are the brand. Yep. Yeah. So I think we set it up very well in the beginning. That got us to a point, and it, also the brand allows us allows you to charge a premium. Sure. So um, and again. Everything we do is a premium in the general sense compared to the guy in the pickup truck. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's what it is. Because again, at the end of the day, junk removal, even if you're getting paying a guy in the pickup truck, technically that could be a premium to someone because like, I'll just put it at the curb myself or do whatever. Sure. Yeah. So again, we're bringing a different level to it. Um, and that allows you to not only charge, but have the confidence, I feel like, in charging that to say uh, for it. So I think that's a big mistake people make at the beginning is not charging enough. We didn't, mm-hmm. even, we, even as I pitched that right now, we had a large, much larger truck. The box truck was technically 25 cubic yards. Yeah. And it, yeah. again, you have to understand the clients. They don't really understand the difference in sure. price point there. Um, we're charging less for it. And you know, um, we, we'll we undercut the big guys yeah. because that's better. That, yeah. was, that was literally our first decision when we made our junk pricing was we just took hunks and took 15% off. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll no, be that cheaper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the way to do it. Well, yeah. I think, and I think that actually is, if you do as a short-term strategy, right, and you know, it's only because we don't have, if your goal is, we need to establish, um, you know, a strong value proposition. What makes us different, and then build value. Yeah. Um, I think that if you're like doing like a Blitzkrieg growth strategy, yeah. it's okay in the beginning. You sure. just have to know like it's like that, the sandwich shop giving be. out the free samples. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like a freemium model. Like yeah, I give you a little, and then you know we get some clients, and then we can kind of go back and, and start to grow it. But but yeah. it, it can't be the oh I'll just be the cheaper guy. That's that that will yeah, never, never work, work. Yeah. long term. Yeah. 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 And. Uh, I guess it all depends on how much time you plan on building and doing that stuff. It sounds easy, and it's yep. not obviously. As you yeah. Go through oh that. yeah, yeah. It takes so like uh, yeah, I think that's the the main thing. It's just making sure that you have a brand to even start with. Um, and yeah, we spend a lot of time just like trying to do that right. And I'm one of the things that's probably my biggest weakness is being a perfectionist. So again, that sounds like that's like the cliche they give in an interview, right? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, uh, my problem is I'm you know. I try right. too hard and, I, and I, you know, yeah. I'm too perfect, whatever. And that is a major issue in business because it, it affects your ability to be decisive and move quickly. For sure. And adapt. So it, it worked out in our benefit in the beginning, mm-hmm. right? To that degree. Um, no but, damages. Everyone's perfect. Yeah. We never yeah. mess anything up, but maybe yeah, we, we don't push the, the boundary. Brand, like yeah, the yeah, color yeah. scopes, how we designed the truck. You know, I can't tell you how many times I did yeah, move the hero here, there, yes. and then just yeah, that. Yeah. And yeah. obviously, it's, it's even changed since then. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I think at least putting some good planning into your brand before, just like you're not going to just service it and understanding you can still build a brand by calling it South Jersey Junk Removal. It doesn't mm-hmm. mean you can't, but people often view it as I take, for example, I didn't, I actually did one in college before, and I was a marketing major, and so I still somehow named it a better way junk removal because I was like, the, the phrasing, I'm like, yeah, there's got to be a better way. And I was yeah. like, that was it, it. It just did not. I, I tried even like do marketing. I was like, it just didn't do anything. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It didn't yeah. do good. And right. Um, I think that's really the people often think that they have to be like the greatest. Some people is also like you have to be able to easily be able to explain what you do in the entire brand name yep. kind of thing. Yeah, sure. Like, no, nah, it doesn't. Yeah, for sure. That way. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. That that's super interesting. Yeah, because I think that's a, that that's a big deal. A lot of people don't think about the long term. They just start like, oh, I'll just make money. So this is easy. People know this, but mm-hmm. like, yeah, you right away you thought like, okay, like I'm actually building this. I'm I'm thinking long term, and that's a big thing for people that don't just start with like, oh yeah, like a, this is a simple name. I'll make yeah. something that's actually thinking about the long. Yeah, term. Yeah, and again, it doesn't mean you can't do it. Um, but yeah, that purpose. If you're going that way, you know, common. There's a lot of businesses out there. There's the, the person's name, right? Yeah, and like you know, Smith's junk removal, whatever. But and not just junk people, like you know, yeah, all over service. Yeah. But um you still you gotta build the brand around it. 
Yeah. Yep. And you said you're a perfectionist or, or, or that can be something that you do. Do you, do you have somebody in your life or in, in, in your business that tries to kind of take that away? Like me, meaning like they try to push you to be like, Hey, like let's, let's move forward. Do you, do you, do you look for a mentor to do that? Is yeah. There... So, um, I definitely do like there's uh, my partner's one of them and they notice I like just move kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And there's benefits to you to really understand like when is more planning good. Of course. Um, so my girlfriend's one of the same ways too, but they, they also, you know, you can be when you're passionate and stubborn and also when you start having some success from the outside, mm-hmm. people start, you know, not giving you advice or they feel like, oh, yeah. I can't question the boss or anything yeah, like that. Yeah. You try to build this environment. Like, no, anyone can tell me, like, I want your feedback. Sure. Yeah. You say that, they don't, they don't give oh, it Oh, not the same yeah, way. Not yeah. the same. Yeah. 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 So um, I definitely reached out to a lot of different things. I'm probably almost, you know, have a, an obsession with almost this, like trying to be perfect at mm-hmm. not being perfect now. Yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I have a lot that I've worked with and tried and tried different things. I think the biggest part is analyzing quickly what's not working and then mm-hmm. shifting again. Yeah. You, know, you got to give something some time, but you got to know when to cut ties. So For I've worked sure. with other people and tried different things. Um, and I've realized one of my biggest things is like, it, it doesn't matter who it is. I'm my own worst enemy. Right. So like you think like, all right, eliminate all of the distractions you can. Right. And lock yourself in a room and, your, your thoughts are still there. Yeah. Yep. You're your so, biggest critic still, yeah. no matter what. You're like, yeah. oh, that's not good. Yeah, so yeah. honestly, right now, we're even looking in, into the uh, EOS, right? The integrator, right? Bringing some, we, we moved the integrator seat around and I think we'd done, we'd had 21 year old kids that were, you know, our bosses at the time and it, like, there wasn't a pride thing. It's just, you know, what's best for the business. Yep. Yeah. Um, but it's still like the integrator, they say like, the more people are visionary than they are in- integrators. Like there's more out there. So it's like, I think it's 5% of people in the world are, are cut out to be an integrator. Mm. So yeah, we're, we're, I think we're still, that's a, probably a missing piece that would help us um, eliminate that. Cause the visionary is supposed to bring great new ideas, but you got to focus on one and then filter it out and then act and execute on that. Um, and I think that's where like deadlines and accountability really comes in. Yeah. Cause yeah. if you're perfectionist, you might push that deadline out a little bit. Yeah, right, right. If you're the yeah. boss, you might be getting away with pushing it <laughs> yeah, out a little yeah, bit yeah, more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, hey, we got to get it yeah. done, even if it's not perfect. Like yeah. we're, we're setting the date as March 30th, yeah. like, you know, and that's it. We're doing yeah. it then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And mm-hmm. I think uh, a lot of it comes down to like, so one of the best ways to view it is like routing and junk removal, right? Yep, yep. You can plan all you want in routing your junk removal route, or even a moving route. I think mm-hmm. moving. I don't do it as much so. Um, yeah, the predictable less than junk. Yeah, 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 yeah. a little more set. But, but yeah, yeah. But yeah. with <laughs> yeah. Uh, junk removal, right? The client never gives you the right description. So you can make the perfect plan, perfect route, and do everything. Oh yeah. And like guys get there, guys. This is two trucks and not. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for sure. And then your whole plan shot. Yeah. Wait, so really? That happens? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or this job is just an estimate, and like no, yeah. even the book, whatever. So, yeah. you know, immediately you have to realize you made a perfect plan, even if it was perfect, and it's shot by yes. the very first shot. Yep. So again, you have to realize uh, there's a good quote. It's um. One of my new favorites right now is a good plan uh, executed violently is better than the perfect plan executed next week. Yeah. Um, and what the does that say? Go fast and break things? Right? Yeah, yeah, go fast and break things. Let's just yeah. say, hey, we're going to go do it, and yeah. then yeah. it's like, we'll figure it out. Yeah. 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 But the only thing I actually liked more about that one is like, you still have to have a plan. For sure. Yeah. But yeah. have a plan. Yeah. Just yes. like, have an okay plan, good solid mm-hmm. plan, and that's it. Yeah. Um, and too many, like, again, the perfect plan, like, again, it's like, all right, I'll start tomorrow. Because that really in that philosophy is, Next week turns to the next week and next week and of next course, week and yeah. nothing happens. So, yeah, I mean, um, it's it's definitely something I think we're still looking to do and improving on. And I'm starting to realize more and more like where my strengths are. And like Gary is another one. Like, and probably we all have mostly the same type of people we of course, yeah. look after yep. and stuff. But he's like, you know, double down on your strengths. I always mm-hmm. say fill in your weaknesses. Yeah. It's hard to fill in your weaknesses. Yeah, for sure. So you have to surround yourself. That's another thing I always say, right? Surround yourself with people that are smarter than you and, mm-hmm. and you know, that level you up. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, yeah. I mean, yeah, that, that, that makes a ton of sense. I mean, I know for us, like we kind of have a natural balance cause I'm more like, yeah, we're just going to do it now. We're going to do it now. And then mm. he's kind of like, like, Oh, no, you're not. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, well, we got to figure that out. You know what I mean? Yeah. To make sure we do it right as opposed to pushing. So that's what I was interested to hear. Like how yeah. you, well, how the you other part of it, it is my brother-in-law isn't full time. He still yeah. has a work for the government. Mm-hmm. So having, and since the relationship's always been that way, um, I've always been a little bit more involved in the operations. Mm-hmm. So I have a little bit more, I guess, natural say in things because I'm more sure. tuned. Yeah, you're, you're, you're more yeah, direct. Yeah. So, but again, that has its, its uh, downsides as well because that allows me to take more time on projects or whatever it be. So, you really need to have that strong relationship together. Um, and I think we do. But if we look at that integrator, you know, that piece, that's why we're considering bringing in someone else to help facilitate some of those bigger projects so we can focus more on, you know, the growth model and, and the vision part of it. 
For sure. Yeah, that's that that's awesome. Um, so how much do you guys like spend between, so we like to call it hunting and farming, mm-hmm. like in terms of how much you're focusing on, hey, how do we make sure we're getting as much jobs in the book and getting as much work? And I think early on that's a big problem. And mm-hmm. then as you get bigger and you start to grow, like focusing on more of the farming, like building the brand that's, hey, this is going to generate, you know, this, this reputation over time where I'm not having to always, you know, hunt, if that, if that makes sense. So it depends on... I guess the industry too, right? Mm-hmm, for sure. So, and, and how much you will do and where you are in your company. So, Junk Rule is one on the residential side. Uh, you're really always kind of hunting. Yeah. Because it's not a common service you need, mm-hmm, yeah. right? And a lot of it, what we do is actually on the rental side, but it's actually, uh, I don't know who told us the term to use, but connector. So, like a real estate, again, they're not really B2B because they're not the ones paying you. Right. They're, they're really a referral source and they're connecting yeah. you to their clients. So, it's still residential. Um, and you can nurture those you know, more. I think we found ourselves doing too much of the hunting and not mm-hmm. enough of the farming. Mm-hmm. I think if you, again, our concept there was also like, if you have a killer, killer brand and you have killer customer service, you create those raving fans and you don't need to do as much of that farming. Yeah. But the problem is, yes, that sounds great in theory, but you're not on the trucks every day, right? Mm-hmm. You gotta, it's, it's not, we still, we have like 1200 reviews on Google mm-hmm. um, and we're crushing it, but like, I think we have another like thousand plus elsewhere, and we're like double than than the closest got junk. I think we're like twenty away from doubling them. Um, Sweet, that's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's like a cool goal for us. But There's some brand for everyone. Yeah, right. you, think, yeah, you, <laughs> yeah, think, yeah. you think that's that, that does it right? And yeah. again, it, it it does it to a point. Some social proof. Mm-hmm. But you, you do have the unless you have this like crazy crazy way to make raving fans. Most times you're just like no, it's good service, and also. That's kind of what the client expects now. Yeah. Yep. Everyone expects quick, fast, great service. Yeah. Yep. Amazon. Yeah. 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 It's going to so, come right now. Yeah. 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 So yeah. that's one of the things I think we made a mistake there thinking that that was enough. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not saying not to do it, but yeah. um, we have to nurture more of those people. And um, the other part is that they, you need to feel connected in that, in the, so in the farming aspect yeah. of it. Mm-hmm. Um, because if you're not connected, they're not loyal. And mm-hmm. if they're not loyal, they will leave for a better price sometimes or whatever it is they don't yeah. understand. Or the moment you do slip up, they won't give you a chance to redeem yourself. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. a really part that we, I think, miss. But it's harder, right? It's more time consuming to typically do that. You know, a lot of you know digital marketing and the lead sources and other things out there, it's, it's easy to kind of turn it on and not manage as much. Um, yeah. And I think that's like kind of the easy way out we took there. But, you know, it, it's also easier to track your ROI mm-hmm. on, on sure. those type of things. Yeah. Um, but ultimately that doesn't scale as well, right? You need to develop those relationships and you need to nurture them because then you need to also protect your territory that way, right? That's 100%. a great way where it's easy to start launching PPC campaigns. Like PPC is yep. so saturated now. Of course. Mm-hmm. Um, because especially with like, you know, the way Google has stuff, you can, you can easily create campaigns on your own. Whether or not they're really good campaigns, they still saturate the market. Yes. And they still make your cost per click go up. Yep, yep. So... Um, I think that's the one thing that uh, has changed like one of the most like the way digital marketing is and how easy it is how easy it is also there's so many freelancers out there yeah. mm-hmm. so it's easy to get, to get a pro in and do it, yep. do it quick yeah, you don't have to yeah. worry about making that wrong hire and full time hire so sure. uh, yeah you. I think it even even a couple of years ago it wasn't that bad but now especially with the freelance work it's it's making it very saturated so yep. you have to do the more of the farming and we're, and we're seeing that right now like yeah. um, the natural growth in that way like, or in just digital like we're kind of saturated even in that regard yeah. there's more we can always do like you can optimize and there's sure. new strategies but I think that's where the farming um, we're probably majority like not not doing much farming yeah like active like we do yeah. it like by by incidental yeah because we're, we're you know already there the client calls mm-hmm. or whatever there's a few clients you just have close relationships with but proactively doing it honestly Ten percent, maybe. Hmm. Yeah. So, with that being said, do you guys do uh, any sort of brand development with your employees to try to perpetuate that out in the field? Because, as you had mentioned before, when you're on the truck, obviously it's easy to push brand because mm-hmm. you're the guy. Um, but once you get the crews on the road, not only doing a good job, but do you do anything to um, get them to be bought into that? You know, we are giving the customer that sense of rescuing them. Yeah. So. In the short, it's yes, right? You always try. It. Yeah. What's effective is different. So, you know, ultimately, your people are going to decide, right, that experience, right? Because, mm-hmm. again, we're not on the trucks anymore. Yep. So, um, it's one thing to just write, uh, there's some core values on the board and doing that, but they have to live and understand it. And they, and they have to feel valued and they have to feel purposeful and stuff. Um, and I think we like actively definitely try. It doesn't always, again, 
you're also not in their headspace. So you really have to understand your people and what their needs and wants are. And yep. uh, yeah, that, that empathy part of it is tough. Like mm-hmm. to yeah. really actually do the connect on. Like it's not hard to, to have feelings for them like, care about your employees. Right? That's easy. But how to truly make them feel that way and then get them invested. Um, you know, we, we do different things between, you know, kind of, like we do weekly check-ins now and mm-hmm. just moment to like we say open door policy i think that'll be most people say that. like they're yeah. bad boss but general good boss like yeah you can tell me anything mm-hmm. they won't like yeah. they typically won't come you have to have designate time close the door have a conversation yes. yeah. and, and make that avenue like let's just yeah how are we doing like what's your yep. headspace at and that opens more conversation and i think ultimately that's created more eq for our employees for sure to, to then you know bring that to um you know out in the field or especially we like i do it with, with my direct reports and that helps them direct their teams. For sure. Um, and honestly, I think that's where we've probably done really well to, to yeah, get that message out there. It's, is they have to feel cared for and not that we even the care like if they are as people, but we care that they're successful. Yeah. Are, are, yeah. are they learning new stuff? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think like people don't think that like, like again, you hear, I, I keep going at the AV, but like stacks in the office doesn't build culture, right? Yep. It's, it's not a bad thing to do, mm-hmm. but ultimately, yeah, the people that they need to feel value and they got to like where they are. They got to like the people around them and they, they got to align with the values. Mm-hmm. So you have to live by the values. You got to hire by the values. And that's also hard, especially in the beginning when you're, well, I need people. Like, yeah. I need help. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, and like, yeah, I don't want to make the wrong hire and the best hire. So all that kind of stuff. So we're trying to do more and more. Mm-hmm. And I think the best way to put it is, you know, make it about your people yep. and to make them yeah. feel like they actually, not that they matter, but like, I, and I ask the pistons very often. I don't think guys always believe me. It's like, I want I want to be the company where everyone's trying to poach you guys. And I want yeah. you to have better, what you might see as better opportunities and you come like, I want to be here though. Yeah. Like how do I make yeah. this work and how do I evaluate that? Because um, you want to create, there are always going to things that are going to come up. You want to create the atmosphere they feel comfortable talking to you. Like, 100%. I want to stay here. Like how do we make this work? Yeah. Um, but in order to do that, they, they have to be valuable, right? So you have to build mm-hmm. them up. And guys, I Gary, like you, me, I think he, <laughs> yeah. he talks about too is, um, yeah, the things like, what if I build, what if I invest my people and they leave? And mm-hmm. he goes, well, what if they stay? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah right. Yeah, 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 yeah. When I think a lot of people think too much in the old school mantra is like just financial incentive. Oh, like here's a bonus, do this, here's to do that. But it's so much more than that, especially in today's employee climate. Um, people have options and it's a lot more of like work life balance is kind of like at the peak right now where you know the the typical nine to five monday through friday doesn't fit most people's schedules anymore so you know something as simple as giving them uh scheduling flexibility and and the whole nine and like you said like just showing you give a shit about not only them doing their job but them having you know leaving the job with more experience opportunity you know the whole nine so i I think that's big on top of just like the the traditional oh just give them more money or just you know whatever yeah and i think it's easy to it's easier to pitch it's hard to do it's hard to do. it's really hard to do especially when you're caught in the day-to-day and then you are valuing like kind of like like well all right like if i want to do even say i want to spend time with them or do a course like you still got to measure like the investment for sure um and it makes sense and the other part of it is then people have to live by that and they have to, you know, get, they still have to be bought in. Um, so we definitely had tons of, you know, especially early on turnover that like all the intel left with them, mm-hmm. right? And then, you know, we didn't document our systems as well in the beginning. Yep. But that was tough. Um, but in, in the financial part of it too, I, I talked to someone today actually about it. Um, and just in general, right? Part of the, fi- like you absolutely, at the end of the day, finance is always going to be important, right? You know, make sure of course. And you, yep. the, the people don't realize that we're always trying to make objective decisions like of value and what's the best decision and, and trust the bottom line. And then the other part of they don't, the most important thing I think is that they, they, they see the trajectory and mm-hmm. if I see the trajectory. It's not a, they have to know by this date, I could get, you know, here's what is you know, offered. Like I'm due for a percentage raise. If I do yep. this, and if it's wishy-washy, which at times we definitely have been because we're, we're trying new strategies. Is this the right incentive? Is this not? Yeah. How much do we pay for this position? But if it's not clear, the the issue is the fear of the unknown more than anything else, right? Mm-hmm. Like I was saying today, like the dark isn't scary. It's the thought that what's in the dark is yes. scary. Yep. So if you don't, if they can't see, you know, what's in it for them kind of thing and have a clear thing of, all right, if I do X, I'll get this. Mm-hmm. Um, it makes it really tough unless you have a great culture and vision and they just trust it. Yep. But you still have to have those objective t- things and it's hard to make the right decision on what you incentivize and pay and do all that. Uh, so it all it all comes together. Like it's all those pieces. For sure. But at the end of the day, for the, the, 
the, at the minimum, you're talking about the, the for the client to feel the brand, mm-hmm. the client, the, the employee's got to feel valued. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, it gets harder, I think, when you're bigger too, because you know, early on, it's like, yeah, like you're the one always dispatch, and they, oh, I know Jake, like, yeah, he's good, and we feel valued. Yeah. But now it has to feel like, how do I get that actually to reverberate from the top? And it sounds like you have a, a solid system that you, you actually focus on, like what you said, like a weekly meeting. That's yeah, that's check ins. We started it was started longer, and now they're like 15 minutes for the direct direct reports, and just it's just a check in. I think we could format it better. Um, I actually like the format that well, but then they it's the point is that you do them mm-hmm. and that it gives you an opportunity to do that. One of the things so I was working with um I still am, uh there's one coach, Eric uh Flamboltz in um California, and he uh one of the things he, he said is very important is you set the precedent for him. So you ask him like, Yeah, what is your level of criticism that you are able to take? How do you want me to speak to you? Right. And you know, some guys are like, I want you to tell it straight up. And I was like, all right, I can be straight up and be direct. Or I can be verbatim how my mind thinks, right? And, yes. and keep it very real with you. Yeah. Right. And I think a lot of people will want to say in the beginning, like, yeah, I want you to be straight up. And again, you have to balance yeah, with, with yeah, some yeah. praise and some yeah. other stuff. And that's fine. You read it. But if you set it up and they truly believe that, I have one guy that I would normally not think him to, to want the feedback straight up and verbatim. And he, he handles it the best. Right. And I never would have thought that unless I opened that dialogue yeah, that way. Yeah. And now I can give him very, very constructive feedback that... I see him go apply and I'm like, oh, that's awesome. And he feels <laughs> great with it. Um, and there's those little wins. Like I think coming you as like mature person is really big. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. That's a great point. Awesome. Cool, man. Well, do you have any questions for us or anything? that? Um, yeah, I mean, like, so what's like here with you guys, right? And, and, your, and your branding right now, you know, where, where do you see yourselves in the marketplace? Like, what is your goal when someone thinks of the movie Junkie, right? Because you're, you know, I think a lot of people, there's incidental, incidental not incidental, um, cross-selling opportunities sure. between mm-hmm. junk and moving. Mm-hmm. Junk, like we do junk and dumpsters, right? Yep. So what is your goal when the branding part is like when they think of moving and junk like together, right? Like what is that, what is the, the, the outcome you want it to be in the marketplace? So when people think of moving you and junk you, like what is your... What is your goal if like they say, uh, oh, like you gotta call these guys because yeah, they'll do the clean do the move, but like yeah, how do you guys describe it? That you're sure, to yeah, we say for us, it's uh, you know we really kind of want to fit in that middle portion. There's Chuck in the truck, and then especially for for moving, it's true for junk removal too. But there's like that white glove service that's really expensive. We want to provide that like maximum level of professionalism and professional experience without sacrificing the affordability, mm. right? Especially for moving. So what we did was we focus on just doing local household good moving and junk removal. So we don't mm. do any specialty stuff, any long distance and storage. There's like a lot of different like variables that you can get into, and we found it's like hey what we can do is is really inexpensively you know do those jobs that are just normal goods very often do them very well Mm -hmm. you know what i mean so we can just do a lot of that so people you know can just think of us as being that affordable option but also keeping that professionalism high so that's really a big one for for us how hard has it been for you guys especially in a slower season Mm -hmm. to, to stick to that model and not take that job that's a little outside your scope yeah, I think it's uh, like kind of what you were talking about before is just like get, getting that, that focus on the hunting, just making sure we can service yeah. those guys. You know what I mean? And now the nice thing is since we do both, we kind of still have that, that junk going on, Yeah. right? But yeah, you, it is hard. It is difficult to do. And, you know, we have franchises too, and they, they, they ask about that stuff. But I think, you know, uh, for us, that, that hyper-focus allows us to, to, to really, you know, just ride out those these months because we know that, you know, when we get to the busier period, we can we can still dominate. Yeah, know? I think and there's so, like a... Like we did before, like there's a level of incidental business that if it fits some of your core competencies in general, mm-hmm. or like for us, like trucks and people labor, like and it's and it's a lower skill job. Yeah, um, it makes sense to do and trust that. Sure. And you go, yeah, this isn't our traditional scope, but yeah, we can do. This. Especially if you're talking about winning the entire job, like so if it's a part of the job to win the whole job. Yeah, yeah. But it becomes a dangerous game, right? And we definitely before like we did like leak removal in the beginning, and it was like it's just. Even if it makes sense, your employees don't want to do it. It's not what they signed up for. Exactly. And yeah. everything else. And we're like, oh, you're still getting paid hourly the same. It's different. Their expectations yeah. are everything. Well, yeah. and that's what you said. We What we really tried to do too is we found that in, in our culture is by doing those two services really well, it just sets up this super consistent model for our guys. And there's just not a lot of like wiggle. I mean, yeah, maybe they have five junk jobs today or maybe they have a big clear out, right? Yeah. But it's still the same thing. It's not like, oh, today I do a piano. I don't even know how to do that. I got to look at the handbook. It's like, I just do the same thing every time. And it really sets that tone for those guys to come in and and know exactly what to do. And when there's an issue, it's like, 
yeah, this just happened two days ago. Like it's, it's, I know exactly what to do. It's not like, uh, I got to call my manager because I don't really know what to do. It's like, yeah, no, like we can kind of let the system do what it's doing because it's repeatable. You and know on what top I mean? of that, yeah. um, when our employees do have a problem that is outside their scope, they know they have the management structure that backs them up to genuinely right. support them. And we're not just sending them out in the field to just deal with it. Like yeah. a lot of people might do because it's an easy way out. You know, it's like you guys are there. Like, yeah, we put that. We didn't. Uh, tell the customer you don't take piano, so you guys are just gonna have to figure it out. And they're like, "Well, shit, man! Like this yeah, is yeah, tough. Sucks. Like yeah, now yeah. I got to deal right. with this." So I think that you know, for us, uh, in that refining of the culture, really help or refining of the service helps the culture stay committed to you as an as a person. You know, they don't mm. just look at you as the faceless um, person who's telling them what to do every yeah. single day. Yeah, and that's. Uh, I think that that's the the biggest mistake small businesses don't realize. Is when we're on the trucks, like we're highly invested and we will figure it out. Yeah, I'll do point, anything. Right? Thanks yep. for the money. And we're yeah, not yeah, mad yeah. at the person yeah. supposed to do it because we yeah. we decided to do it. Um, and that works when you're small. You yes. can do it. And you can capture it. If you want to mm-hmm. be an owner operator and just have you and a, and a helper all the time, like you can do like, that. You want to be a totally handyman. Fine. That's yep. literally yeah, what you are, great. right? Yeah, and it makes sense. It's not a wrong living. Like that's fine. Um, it's a lot less stressful. <laughs> sure. Right? Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. So yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, you look at that and you don't realize, all right, when you add those other, le- that's one more piece of training. Mm-hmm. It's one more thing you got to, again, track it, track on marketing or you're targeting piano removal, right? And mm-hmm. all those other things. Um, it's one extra tool you got to have in the truck and it makes it really hard to scale. Yeah. And I think we, we talked before, like the, the Amazon, uh, Amazon of like businesses and Amazon still, yes, they are that, but they do, they're, they're not all, they share the Amazon brave, they're separate companies and businesses oh, yeah, and yeah. everything else. So again, um, and and they're also the anomaly, like mm-hmm. yeah. They're but they get boxes it, and deliver it. Yeah, they just yeah. do so much of it. That's yeah. really you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Like they just do a lot of it. They're just yeah. super good at doing that very often at scale. And yeah, now they have these other businesses, but, but that's it. Yeah, they're, they're separate. Right. right. You can do other things, but you got to master one thing first for yeah. sure. And not the sh- same resources, not the same people, not the same trucks. Um, and then you, that they're all individual. Like even got junk right. Um, you know. You think about like, well, how come they didn't do moving? How come they didn't do dumpsters? They tried. Right? They tried. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. They tried, right? didn't do there it well. Go. And yeah. you know, you look at Shack Shine, and you look mm-hmm. at um, you move me, mm-hmm. and which isn't OTE anymore. Well, but yeah, uh, that, I think. Yeah. Well, so also right, did they build them? No, they acquired them. Exactly. Yeah. So again, yeah. that's the other thing is they, they, they it's hard to build, hard. and they didn't group yeah. it all in. They were all separate, and they had you know a parent company to support them, and that model is mm-hmm. different than you know us doing everything. Yep. Yeah. So uh, that's I think one. The, like, like entrepreneurial mistake number one is like trying to do too much. Yeah, because you just see the money and go, oh, geez, I can do it. Yeah, well, sure, And I sure. would take that a level deeper too because something that I've learned in our entrepreneurial journey is that, you know, when we were working at College Hunks, we were pretty star-studded employees because like we have that natural drive just to do yeah, good. Yeah. And even though it was a remedial job, like we still had a care behind our work. So then when we transitioned into business ownership, I just assumed that everyone has a everyone pride. kind yeah. yeah like everyone wants to work hard and make money and have pride in their work um, quickly realize that they don't and it's not even at the fault of them and then again listening to Gary you know your employees don't care like duh and it's just like oh well you know that that does make more sense now but I was just um, uh, jaded or, yeah like yeah. I just because yeah, yeah. I thought I thought everyone worked how we operated right. yeah. it's like yeah. yeah like that's just what you do but it's not the case yeah and I think like going back to like me talking about being a perfectionist right uh you can also see it as a negative right like so I, I had another friend uh in college and they were the person that did, didn't do all that stuff but they were super decisive right mm-hmm. they knew i don't need to bust my ass at this job right now like they had a different mindset mm-hmm. and now they're actually they're a business owner right now yeah. yeah and so it's the same thing just because someone doesn't work really hard doesn't mean they don't care in general but they have different priorities For sure right? it doesn't mean yeah. they don't work hard in other areas of their that's life that's it yeah and that's what i'm saying like for us probably and and again there's there's an aspect of like you gotta like the manual labor part at least for what we do to a sense yes like and like moving Mm -hmm. um and not everyone got like i literally would always like i would flex as i carried stuff sometimes like i'm gonna get an exercise in i'm gonna make it work Mm -hmm. i'm gonna time how fast i can do this jump onto the truck yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. it's different um (laughs) than other people there or like again uh i was like you guys follow stand-up guys somewhat Um, yeah i like the content yeah and uh, like casey uh, my hair was growing out like it was funny but I was talking to reps and he has like the same desk and everything too like it was really? like yeah just <laughs> weird redhead things but anyway uh, a video I saw the other day like again they were like trying to you know flip a couch by themselves and throw it over the top and like, I remember doing that all the time just like 
uh, yeah, I can get this couch on myself. I can do this yes. myself. Yeah. It wasn't smartest and my <laughs> yeah, body yeah, hates yeah. me now. <laughs> but yeah, not everyone thinks like, and that's okay. Everyone's mm-hmm. got a different priority. I think absolutely. Yeah, you know, people talk about passion and everything else, and yeah, passion isn't for everything you do in life. It's a passion. What is yes. your passion? That's and I think working hard and building businesses and stuff like is part of it. Like I'm not super passionate about trunk pool. Like mm-hmm. I'm honestly not, but I, I am passionate about our company and the people we work with and our clients. Right. And it's the vehicle we get there. And, and, um, yeah, it's a weird thing to say. I've been mean, like, what do you mean? You're, you're a junk removal company. I'm like, I don't hate junk removal, but, um, right. You know, it's, uh, it's not about, you know, picking stuff up and putting it down. For I sure. That's the oh, better yeah. way of phrasing it. You just, if you're a business, a passionate business owner that just happens to be in yeah. junk removal. If you're passionate about junk removal, whoever are watching this and listening to this, <laughs> you will probably always be on the drugs because you're yes. going to look at every single item. Yes. yes. And you're going to try to find <laughs> yes. it yes. and you're going to yes. collect yes. it. And you're probably, if you're passionate enough, you're probably a hoarder. Yeah, I was right? just going to say, yeah, you're right? definitely a hoarder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think that's something that uh, people have to be okay with and just understand. But yeah. 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 And if you're um, passionate about moving, you're psycho. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you just like to do long labor. Yeah. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. But yeah, no, I think uh, for us, like, you know, just setting that consistency is a, is a big deal for the employees. You know what I mean? Just kind of making sure that they have that that consistent base every single day because, like you said, they, they don't, you don't know what they want. So we can say, hey, here's what we're going to give you. And there's opportunity to be the guy like us. Yeah, I'm going to take as many hours as I can. Yeah. I'll work an extra. But if you want to just do what, what we're asking, that's fine. Do that and go home. And everybody's happy. So yeah. that's, that's where we see ourselves in the marketplace, even for, our, our employee base too and it's really helped us retain and, and, and hire and we, we've been overstaffed and it sounds like you have too all these other people complain about people and we're like yeah, we're, yeah we have people, too many people yeah we, the only time so the, our biggest people issue was actually this time last year uh, in the spring too. yeah because of it, it's again it's just supply and demand yep. so many people in unemployment it, it changed the, the oh, other sure. than that yes. like yeah. yeah for most part like oh it's hard to keep them like it's not really that hard. like honestly for especially right now the abundance of applicants that come in, it's you know, it's hard to get good people. Yeah, well, yeah that's, that's always different. the case. Right. Sure, yeah. sure, sure, sure. Yeah, um, yeah. But people also say it's it's. I don't even say it's hard to get good people. I'm saying if you go quantitative of just all right, I got 100 applicants, right? Yeah, you know, quality you know, might not always be there because also if you're doing it that way, that means these are people that don't have jobs mm-hmm. yeah. for the most part, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but in general, the staff, especially if you treat people right, the referrals and everything, they like are. Usually our best employees are come from referrals. Oh, right? mm-hmm. all, all of ours. Yeah. And yeah, so, um, yeah, it, all the, the, the cliches and mistakes are all kind of like, you know, common, I think, against it. It doesn't make it easy. Mm-hmm. And like, people, people like, so these podcasts, people are like, oh, why would you like, even if you're going into trade secrets, which that like, most companies, there's a bunch of companies out there that explain how to do everything mm-hmm. and it doesn't mean you can go and do it. For like, sure. There, there's all, so many variables that go oh, into yeah. it. and yeah. Yeah, it's just not. We not could easy. take all three of these cameras and record all of LeBron's workouts. That doesn't mean anything. Yeah, yeah you still got to actually shoot the shots and have the talent to actually go out and execute it. Yeah. yeah, we could. You could tell everybody everything on how you built it day by day, have a recorder. That doesn't mean they're going to actually be able to execute the way that you. Did. Yeah, and actually yeah. want to go do it. Or, right? Yeah, and yeah. want to do it. Yeah, or do those those three months where you're working, you know, all night. That doesn't. Yeah. You can't. Yeah, yeah. not everybody's going to do that, or yeah. even have the ability to. You know. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's but it's. The whole like wisdom type of thing, and you realize, oh, okay, that's what that person was trying to tell me before, and then you <laughs> figure it out. So like, I don't know if you guys have done this, like when you read a book. So like, the E Myth is a really co- common book. That yep, you read. Yeah, Every time you read it, you read it. You know, it's an easy read. Mm-hmm. It's different because yep. you know it, you have new experiences to relate it to sure, yes. and everything, and you're like, oh, why don't I just do this kind of the first time? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Then you read it again, like why don't I do that the first time? Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's uh. Yeah, it's kind of like a never-ending type of like kind of. Journey, yeah, kind of our our, uh, our investor he says that it's like you're running a race with a finish line that doesn't exist, mm-hmm. and it's so true because yep. you it, it's all about the journey, it's all about keeping stepping forward, and there's always that goal in mind, but like you're never really getting there. It's mm-hmm. just something to chase and just grow, and you know everything that comes with it. My boy Gary, you know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. That. Well, so funny story with that is, so um, I was probably an early adapt doctor, like in that whole scale with the uh, Gary yeah. V. Yep. Um, and so I was following him like early on, and we actually had someone come here to look at doing like, a reality TV show. Um, this was like in our second year, and in those first two years, 
Um, I don't know what kind of stories you guys want to share, but you got some wild stories, not just what you find, people like the people management part of it and what yeah. they do and the what people the, you yeah. hired and what they did. Yes. And Especially if you've never owned a business, you, you don't yeah, realize you make, what could happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, backgrounds yeah. and everything else, things that you mess up on, um, clients too, mm-hmm. them going crazy and put yourself in you yep. know, employees in dangerous situations so you just oh, don't yeah. know better. Yep. Yep. Um, so, but, but you know, we were telling these stories and so my brother-in-law was doing like a comedy show and yeah, he, his coach knew some TV producer. So we met the producer. They came here, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And like she brought it back to whoever, and they're like, "It's been done before." And they actually tried it with college hunks. Oh no way! Because yeah, we were we were trying. They were trying to do more of a like hoarders and um, kind of a uh, storage wars kind of thing mm-hmm. deal. Yeah, 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 like yeah. those two things. So that's really yeah. common. Kind of people are interested in kind of right. Yeah. yeah. And we were trying to also spin in like an entrepreneurial mindset, course, right? And yeah, pitching yeah. like, what happens if you were? What what would it be like if you could see a, an actual company from startup to scale up yes. yeah right yeah. and there's like this show called that start up the scale up or something now too um but anyway she's like i know gary v and like like <laughs> what's like i can introduce him and like nothing yeah. had panned out and actually before i so we launched the company in 2016 i applied to vayner media in like 2014 maybe no way oh, wow. and then wow, get an interview um, <laughs> and like best interview i didn't get right yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so but it was cool to see that and then uh, yeah, kind of pick up. I, I applied to like a bunch of places too and you think about all the places you don't get hired and you know, and yeah. uh, I think my, I don't think I was great at writing resumes and cover letters and everything. Like writing is not my forte there but uh, you think it's a, it all works out kind of thing. For sure. And the thing is I actually don't think it all works out. I think there's just an endless amount of opportunity. You just have to take action and seize it and you know, um, doesn't mean some other people don't have more opportunity, but there's still a lot for everybody. You oh, just definitely. have to take action and seize it. Yeah. Um, and learn from it because you're probably going to fail. And yeah. You're gonna fail again, you know, <laughs> well, I heard yeah. Gary say, like, someone was like, what's your best advice for a new brand? And he was like, post on social media every day. <laughs> yeah. And people are like, yeah, like 99% you're not going to do this. Like, you're not actually going like, yeah, to build a brand. Yeah. Yeah. It's, we just started, to be yeah. honest. Like, we just got into it. And it's going to suck, right? The content's going to suck in the beginning. You're not going to get likes. And that's, uh, that's just normal. like Gary's did. You know what yeah. I mean? And now it's pretty good. You know, yeah. so that's yeah. how it goes if you want to get to that point but it's true for for anything that you do yeah, yeah. you watch like everyone thinks that instant success and you look at like a lot of gary's old videos and like like wait he was doing these like um the wine shows, tastings. To think, yeah, wine he was, tastings, doing, the but wine, he was yeah. doing a lot of like present day like like 2008 2007 six and he's got his freaking sweatband on yeah, yeah. it's like kind of <laughs> chunky yeah. and his yeah, face yeah. is more round yeah. Yeah. it's always yeah, weird yeah. How, how the hair comes yeah. back there i know yeah 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 just like that lebron thing once you get to that yeah 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 once you get to nine figures yeah yeah you you just kind of can get it yeah yeah so yeah man it's uh so that's like the part i like about this too is like it's hard to get like the people truly understand the journey like there's people that understand the journey in general that have been around it mm-hmm. but the the again when you're last in line you know and it even starts with managers i was like once you're a manager too and like let's say you're responsible for running is like you were last in line like if your employees call out like what do you do kind of deal and um and obviously once you get to the owner you're ultimately last in line like, everyone mm-hmm. could leave and you could still be the last one standing it's yep. not over until you get yes. home yeah um and i think that the mindset and feeling is just it's a weird feeling to truly portray mm-hmm. and say like hey you don't fully understand um, and the stress it puts on and the accountability yeah. for your people and all that. Um, yeah. So it's nice, like, you know, obviously talking. And yeah, especially great. in the junk space, like, the stories are all the same. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah. yeah. It's so true. Yeah. 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 That's funny. We, we yeah. know a bunch well, of Well, they're close to the guys. same. Yeah. 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 yeah they're I, pretty know, much I, I think same. some of my uh, bad people stories are probably up there. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we uh, still get, got junk calls us or someone just like, hey, how's so-and-so? We're like, well, you know, they're yeah, like, yeah, 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 okay. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? It, <laughs> it, it's all said. the same. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah Have yeah. you had any employees try to fight you? Uh, yeah, a couple. Yeah, a couple. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, that's for sure. It's kind of come, you're like, you're just like, I, I can't. Do you, do you know? Like, yeah. I can't do that. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sure. I, I, I know you have nothing to lose here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. You're like, yeah. okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then, uh, well, actually, people don't realize too, I think most common, like, I've had in the early stages, like, some of the fires and things situation we didn't manage as well, mm-hmm. right? It's ugly, and I had I had that happen three different times, like been threatened, and all three of them, um, or I'm cool with now. And like, the, oh, yeah, really? oh the, yeah. yeah, and all three because I've always been calm, collective. The guy, yeah. kind of, I made mistakes, absolutely. Yep, but I don't hold grudges, um, mm-hmm. like ever. I'm just like I'm kind of over it. Um, and a couple I saw out, and I like ran out to him, gave him a hug, dapped them up, and like after like the last time I told you, like I was I was gonna kill you, and I'm like. Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, I understand yeah. That you're stressful. You got money, yeah. you got situations, and honestly, you had every right to be fired. But I didn't prep you enough to be like you should have known this was your last straw. Yeah, and they're like, what do you mean? I like you're, one of the kids' last straw was like 
you threatened to fight me. Yes. Yeah. I'm gonna like, <laughs> like, like, or like over nothing. Like, yeah, like, too. And, um, yeah, I think that they're like, what do you mean? You, we created an environment where people could get away with it. And mm-hmm. yeah, that's our, well, problem. and I think that's like required entrepreneurial DNA is to be able to like any situation, like, well, what could have I done differently? Yeah. Like, how could yeah. I, like, and how do I use this as a growth? Like there's a lot of people and rightfully so sometimes it really, most of the time now I shouldn't say most of the time, there's plenty of times in those situations where most of it wasn't your fault, but you still look at it. If you want to be like the last line as something that's okay. Well, yeah. What could I have done? Could you, what could you contribute to make it less? So yes, like, for um, sure. We had guys stealing scrap in the beginning, uh, and we do scrap inside. It's fifty percent they get right, mm-hmm. and, and they were stealing. And we went over to uh, Sergeant Scrap, which is in Pensalkin here, and we're all up in arms. We're, we're, you know, you feel you take everything personally, especially in the beginning. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So yeah, and so we went over there, and I'm in arms, and the you know uh, the owner over there, he's just calm, collective ceremony. He's like, so, and like we're like, what do you mean? Are you pissed? <laughs> like they, they stole scrap. They came here. We have them on tape. Like the cameras are truck, whatever. He's like, guys, people are always gonna steal. Like they're always going to do stuff wrong. Your your goal is not to stop them. Your goal is to limit them. Yes. Yeah. You want to limit yeah. the things that can go wrong. You yes. cannot stop all of them. Yes. You want to limit them, and then you know yeah. you th- start thinking about it that way. You take it less personal, right? For and, sure. And you get less stress Definitely. on it. Definitely. Um, it's funny how like, you have certain things that just stick with you, like certain lessons mm-hmm. that are, and I think it's definitely always tied into emotion, mm-hmm. right? Oh yeah, yeah. I remember that too. And yeah. Uh, and early yeah. on, there's there, there's more emotion because, like you For said, sure. you're, you're so in the nitty gritty. Like, like yeah. it's all about you, and you're like, wow, it's like they did it to me. Yeah, you know. Well, that's what they say about like uh, childhood memories and like the yeah. teenage years. Yeah, is your so many new experiences and emotions, and it feels like that teenage years were so long to you, mm-hmm. right? Because you have so many experiences and so many memories. Yeah, and that's what it feels long. The, the rat race now, right? Day to day stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and starting a new drunk company, you have a lot of memories of the early days because there's sure. so much stuff going wrong yeah. and new, mm-hmm. and now you're doing more consistent stuff. Yeah. And yeah, it, it just feels slow and long sometimes, but then you're like, right. where did the time go at the same time? Yeah, For sure. yeah, yeah. Because it's a lot of like, yeah, oh, we did more junk today, more moving, great. Okay, you know yeah. what I mean? It's yeah. like, as opposed to, yeah. wow, today we got to figure out how we're going to get these three trucks on the road. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. now it's like, yep, the six trucks went out, great, awesome. You know what I mean? Yeah. You just kind of like, okay, now it's Tuesday. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. that's. Yeah, that's, it's, it's hard. Like, you would be like, all right, how to imagine yourself a giant company, right? Mm-hmm. Then you just look back, like, I couldn't, you know, I could say I could imagine, but like, I'd tell you exactly how it would work yeah. from where we are today to where we were in the beginning. It's hard, but the line up, like, piece, the pieces just kind of line up and yeah. it becomes easier. For sure. So, I still have trouble thinking about, like, all right, to be like a billion dollar company, a hundred million dollar company, like, all those things and what we'd be doing day to day. But people do it all the time. Yep. Sure, yeah. It's, it's like fun to there. figure it out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So anything else on you guys just in general kind of no. thing? No, no, yeah, no. I, I appreciate good. the time, man. Yeah, yeah. and I, again, I, I I get, for me, I get a lot of energy actually from these conversations. Oh, just so, oh it's... Like that yes. stuff. So, you know, I'm sure you guys get it to a point with your friends. Everyone asks like, what you do in business and talk about it. Then once you start getting that passion and start rambling about it, they're like, all right, I don't care. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's too much for them. Yeah, they don't yeah, get yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's nice like, to someone fought like, you, you think that's cool? Like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, awesome. No, yeah, yeah definitely. And for Boston, man, like, uh, I don't think we do enough of this as, like, general entrepreneurs. Entrepreneur, for sure. Business owners, like, paying shots. Uh, ideas, like, brand Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, for me, competition, like, to me, like has never been like that much of a thing, right? Because like, what's Gary say? There's abundance. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So I treat it like like how I play golf. Like if I'm golfing someone, like I do want to beat them, but I still want them to score a really low score. Yeah. Like I want them to have their best score. I just want to also like, you know what I mean? It's like yeah, like um, I I hope you are a billion dollar company, and I hope like yeah. you know we're as high as we can get. But I, I don't think of it as like all oh, like you got to not make money for it's, me to make. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. right, right. Yeah. yeah. If I can yeah. think of one thing about competition for that, like everyone in our industry is like, oh, got junk. Got Junk did you guys a huge favor and they still are. They're educating the marketplace yes. every day. So the person that searched junk removal on Google, mm-hmm. the reason they had the idea to search junk removal and saw your page and clicked you is it most likely become the brand awareness yes. that they did. Yeah. Because yeah. I still tell people like, oh, like this is what we do. And I'm like, they don't know. They don't mm-hmm. know what junk removal is. What's that? I'm like, oh, do you know what Got Junk? And they're still like, no. Yeah. Like, so yeah. they think like they haven't even saturated the market, yes. let alone the industry. It's like a new trade, right? Yeah. Even yeah. though it's, you know, 20 or 30 years in now. Um, since when they got drunk first, like started doing it, like people still don't know what it is a lot of times. Um, so, and people haven't often first time ever purchased it. We haven't bought junk removal before. Mm-hmm. So again, like so looking at that and look at the, the pros and yeah, it makes, it makes your life a lot easier. Yeah. Well, and like you said about like that millionaire next door thing, it's just like our expectations weren't like, I mean, we would like, I guess to make more money, but we're happy where we are. You know, it's really about the fun of the game. So it's like, it's all gravy anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's all just like the competition is just for the sake of, yeah, we lost like, 
okay, you know what I mean? But we still landed in a good spot, so great. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. And I think uh, if anything, like, there's so much more market saturation. Like, oh uh, yeah, the, the percentage of people that actually use this, there's a lot more buyers that can turn. Oh well, well, especially if you think about how. Okay, so what's p- putting the cap on the junk mover market, and it's. The baby boomers who, for whatever reason, just love their furniture. Like, they don't want to get rid of it. But then, you know, once they go and now the millennials come in, they're like, I don't want any of this shit. Like, let's get rid of it. All the heavy oak furniture. Yes. Or, and the IKEA furniture. It's in great condition, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can sell this? I think I might. And all the IKEA furniture that we all buy because it's nice, cheap, and convenient. We use it for three years and then we wind up throwing it away. And you know what I mean? So, like, we're just... Where I feel like you're hundred percent right. We are just scratching the surface of what the next generation of people coming up are gonna be yeah. needing to get and rid of. Stuff. Like the disposable income, I mean the, the crap we all buy. Yeah. We all have disposable income, it's just what uh, we choose yeah. to spend it on. Yeah, for sure. And uh I think uh the, the only thing the biggest threat to them are like if everyone can truly be uh minimalist they like, kinda and like yeah, yeah, the new rich is you know experience based. Yeah. Uh yeah, they're still consumers. Still yeah, consumers. Oh, yeah, 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 for you're sure. You're going to buy the other stuff. <laughs> well, it's funny because I feel like my experience-based stuff is like it's actually in work, as weird as that sounds. Yeah. I actually like the, yeah. the grind of like, oh, how are we going to figure this out? How are we Okay, like uh, how are we going to get our, our podcast set up? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's a, it's a good job for Jake. Like I, I don't know. I, that that actually is what I feel like is, is, is you know. Yeah, and I think that's like that's a hard thing to tell people like. Yeah, they don't get yeah, yeah, Like yeah. the whole, uh, Gary Vee talks about it too. And God damn it, Gary. <laughs> yeah, 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 uh, right. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, work-life yeah. balance yeah. and like say it doesn't exist. And no, it's, it's, a, what, it's, what, it's all about what you consider like there yeah. is no balance in the, in the world because you can't just like life. you can't have perfect balance it doesn't right. happen so if this is what you enjoy in that yeah you have to make time for yeah go tell tom brady that, that. Yeah, yeah right go tell yeah. him yeah work-life balance how he felt when he was yeah, yeah. all day all night you know what i mean like yeah, yeah like, so again yeah. and the people will understand like yeah if it makes you happy and you enjoy it you know it doesn't mean like highs are high and lows are low yeah that's sure. a, that's the thing to people understand like you will be stressed and people will see it but you have purpose and you know, I think there's nothing worse than feeling stuck. For sure. Um, for sure. In like a job, right? That's like, the, you know, things that lead mm-hmm. to depression yes. and everything else. It's 100%. just feeling not what to do. Um, but yeah, it doesn't mean I want to, you know, uh, scream and punch the last thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like. Not all the time. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I think, uh, yeah, man, it's just, it's all part of the ride. Awesome. For sure. Yeah. So, awesome. Cool, man. Well, thanks. Yeah, definitely, Appreciate guys.